Let's talk about the money. Hey guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Out in the shop tonight, and I just want to talk about a subject that came up on my blog the other day, and I received a lot of email about this, so I know there's some interest in it. Um, let me start back at the beginning. A few years ago, I uh, did a video on YouTube showing how to cut coins on the scroll saw. And specifically what I showed was how to build the jig to hold the coin so you could cut it on the scroll saw. And it worked fine, and it still does, but uh, the way you did it is you would take a block of wood and you would take a spade bit and you would drill a hole that was just uh, a little bit uh, larger than the size of the quarter. Then you would take a smaller spade bit, drill down in the same place to make a little rim that you could set the quarter down in flush with the top of the board. Then you would cut it in half to create a kerf and you would take and put the quarter in that little slot, put it in a set of clamps like this that we made up, clamp it together and then you could take this whole unit to the scroll saw and do your uh, coin cutting using these very tiny, and you won't be able to see them, but very tiny uh, jeweler's blades. So several years passed and I haven't done much coin cutting. Uh, it's just not a particular interest of mine. But when I got that new 3D printer that I've been talking about so much on the blog, I was just looking for different projects. And one of the projects that came to mind was a jig to hold a quarter that was easier and uh, smaller and lighter than the way we used to do it. So that's what I was showing on the blog the other day. Now, just to clear it up, I, I do not plan on selling this jig. Um, it's not high enough quality to sell it. And, and honestly, they take so long to make on the 3D printer that I would have to sell it for way more than anybody would be willing to purchase one for. Uh, this jig right here probably took me six hours to print. Uh, which sounds crazy, but that's just the state of 3D printers and the way they work. Uh, they work great for doing mock-ups, which was basically what you would consider this, um, even though I'm going to use it in its final state uh, as, a, you know, as a tool. Uh, this would be much better if it was milled out of aluminum, then I would, build, I would feel a lot more comfortable trying to sell it. Uh, but as it is, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the 3D print files avail available on my blog for free. So, if you see this, you have access to a 3D printer either at home or at a friend's house or at your local library. Uh, several libraries around the country now are putting in maker shops where they have laser printers, 3D printers. Uh, some of them are even going all the way to CNC machines. So check that out and see if you have it available. And if you do, you're welcome to give this a try. So what I thought I would do tonight is give you a closer look at this, how it works, and talk a little bit about the files that I'm going to give you. So let's get a little closer look here and we'll talk about it. Here's a nice close look at this coin cutting jig I built. And we'll talk about some of the advantages first. One is it's very light. Um, it's easy to hold on to. I've put some fillets around the edges to smooth everything out. Uh, when you have it down on your table, it's easy to control because it's small. Uh, you have very good visibility of the coin uh, while you're doing the cutting. It does hold the coin pretty well. Uh, I'm actually working on another version that uh, hopefully is even an improvement from this one. And I'll show you when we take the uh, plastic bolts out here in a minute, the one thing I'm trying to improve. Uh, as you can see, it has a flange and four screws. And then you've got this half inch thick uh, piece of plastic with a hole that goes all the way through it. And let's go ahead and take the bolts out and we'll talk about the construction real quick. Now these bolts, if you get the 3D files to print, these bolts need to be printed with a 100% infill. Uh, typically 3D printed files are printed with a, like a 20 or a 30% infill and for strength if you use these bolts, and these are 1 quarter 20 bolts, uh, so you could replace these with uh, store purchase bolts. You would need uh, a one quarter twenty, and I think probably a one quarter inch length would be fine. I haven't tried it yet because, to be honest with you, these plastic bolts have been working fine. I know that sounds crazy, but so far so good. You don't have to torque this thing down real tight to get it to hold this quarter. And once we get these bolts out, 
we've got this one tenth inch thick flange with the four holes for the bolts in it that sets on top of the quarter. The hole in this flange is just slightly smaller than the quarter so the quarter can't come up through it. Now you can see here I've got the quarter inside the jig and I've got this piece of paper and the reason for this piece of paper is although even though that the the coin was held into place very tightly up and down didn't want to go anywhere when you put any pressure on it it wanted to spin a little bit uh, so by pushing the coin into this paper and then into its recessed slot uh, it's keeping it from spinning now the one that I'm working on right now let me get this out of here the ledge that this coin sets on which is too going to be too small for you to see it's very tiny um, I'm actually putting ridges around there that I'm going to see if that's enough to hold the coin in place without the paper. But if not, using the paper is no big deal. You just cut it to size, put it over the hole. You don't want it to cover the bolt pattern, but just big enough to cover the hole. Then you can take the quarter, push it down in there, and that locks it in there pretty good. It doesn't want to spin. It's nice and tight. So if the ridges don't work or if they wear out, which I suspect they will over time, uh, the paper is a good option and it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. So that's uh, what you will get. You will get the 3D file for the base and it will be printed at a 20% infill. You'll get the 3D file for the flange and this will be solid just simply because it's so thin it, it, there's no room for infill. So it will be a solid piece of plastic when you print it. And then you'll get the 3D file for one of the bolts and again, make sure you print these solid because if you have a 20% infill, the cap will break off of the screw. And that may happen anyway if you ever decide to torque down on this thing. You do have to be a little careful with it. And uh, you may want to just go out and get some 1 quarter 20 inch bolts right off the bat. And then, of course, all you do is put your flange on here and put the holes back in, or put the bolts back in the holes. And the fact that this 3D printer can print these bolts and print the threaded holes in the um, base still kind of blows my mind, but it's very accurate. It does a super job. Uh, it's, it's been a real surprise to me that a $200, and this thing was $200, uh, 3D printer can allow me to do some of the things I've been doing. And I, I bought this printer mostly on a whim because it was so cheap and people were telling me it was a good printer for the price and you know it was just something different for me to play with more than anything but after I got it I started seeing the potential of it and that you could actually make usable items with this thing. Uh, the only difficulty is the printer is very easy to use it's not a problem at all but the design software the CAD software uh, is a different story. It can be very difficult to learn to use and I spent the last few weeks or last couple weeks uh, diving deep into uh, Fusion 360 which is the CAD software that I'm using and uh, I, I'm starting to get it down but it does take some some effort to get there. So that's the jig, that's the files you'll get and how you need to print them. And Now just real quick I'm going to go over and drill a hole in this coin and we'll run over to the scroll saw and just cut for a minute or two. Uh, there's nothing real exciting to see over there when I start cutting other than the fact that we could talk one more time about the fact that these jeweler's blades are much much smaller than a regular scroll saw blade and they break a lot easier so uh, the old saying of let the blade do the cutting is as important on this as anything you'll ever do um, I don't like I said I don't cut a lot of coins so the odds I'm going to go over and break one are pretty high but we'll go over and give it a try I took my jig with the quarter in it over to the drill press and I just made one entry hole because I'm not probably going to try to finish this coin just want to give you a couple little tips and uh, I've installed a uh, what size is it? a two aught jeweler's blade uh, in the scroll saw this is these are some old jeweler's blades I had uh, they uh, have a different numbering system now so if you go to uh, mikesworkshop.com and look for the jeweler's blades there you'll see that there's three different sizes available I would order some of all three because it's hard to know uh, which are more comfortable for you until you use them. I'm using the smallest one I have. Uh, these coins are not terribly hard, uh, but making a turn uh, with the larger, even the, as small as these are with the larger jeweler's blades uh, can get a little difficult. So I'm going to 
thread this blade through this one entry hole that I made and we'll see if we can get it chucked up here. This is a little bit hard to do because these blades are so tiny. Sometimes they want to slip out of these clamps, but I think we're okay there. Okay, we'll zoom in a little closer here and we'll just make a couple cuts. Got a nice close up shot here that I hope you'll be able to uh, see what I'm doing here a little better. A um, couple things I want to talk about first is something I haven't tried before is using beeswax on the blade to help lubricate it to make cutting these coins easier. Um, I've seen this trick used before but I've never tried it so we're going to give that a try tonight. And before you clamp up the, the jig just rub a little bit of this beeswax on the blade like I'm doing right here and uh, we'll see if that helps. And then while we're cutting, uh, we'll try to see if we can get a piece of it in there and uh, keep it lubricated up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, thread my blade again. Clamp it up one more time. And what we'll do is we'll begin cutting around the front of the face here of this quarter. And I won't go too far into it uh, because I've done these videos before. You can go back and watch those. But in general, you just want to uh, take your time on these cuts. You obviously can't force these very small blades. Uh, so go slow. Uh, a lot of times we're on a regular scroll saw project where you would come to a turn and you would just make that turn. On a coin and with these small blades, a lot of times it's a lot better strategy that instead of making that turn back out and come into it from another direction, uh, just to keep from having to make sharp turns. Uh, you will break some blades no matter what you do when you're cutting these coins uh, but you might as well try to minimize all the stress on the blade you can. So let's go ahead and cut here just for a minute and I'm just going to cut around the, the nose and then up through the forehead and you'll see that while I'm cutting here that I'm going very slow uh, until I get a feel for these blades I get my ear down there until I get a feel for these blades I just have to go slow now again, I chose the smallest blade I have, uh, jeweler's blade that I have, because I know that they're easier on these quarters, the smaller they are. They're easier to break, but they're also a lot easier to make turns, as long as you don't rush it. So I'm just going to let the blade cut, and you can see I'm cutting through there. Not being very accurate, but it's hard to set off to the side and scroll. Uh, but obviously the more you practice, the better you'll get. And some people who cut coins a lot can get very detailed. They'll actually cut around the letters and uh, you can really make some beautiful jewelry that way. But I think you can see as far as the jig goes, which is the main focus I wanted to make of this video, the jig is working quite well. Uh, with that paper in there, I'm not having any problem with the quarter spinning anymore, which I was having that problem last night. Um, I'm very comfortably able to hold this jig because it's so small. Um, I can get in here very close with my fingers with no problems. I also don't have the extreme height that I had on the other jig. So if you're on a DeWalt or some other machine that has your thumb screw over here, you're not going to have that pinching hazard that you normally have with a very high piece of wood. And so far this blade's doing a good job. It's actually moving along at a pretty good pace. Okay, I think that's pretty much all you need to see. Again, if you download these files, and I'll put them up on the blog in the next couple days, uh, I want to uh, work on this lower part one more time to see if we can make the jig to where the quarter won't spin without the paper, and then you can use the paper if it wears out. Uh, make sure you print the screw the uh, bolts uh, with a 100% infill. Anything less than that, and you're going to break the heads off, guarantee you. 20% uh, infill on the base, and of course solid on the on the uh, flange but it'll print solid anyway because it's so thin uh, and you know give it a try it's probably not the most durable jig in the world uh, but so far I haven't been able to break it the only thing I've broken so far is I broke one of the bolts because I forgot to print it at a hundred percent and uh, I twisted the head off of it but other than that it's stronger than you would expect so Something for you to try. I'm Steve Good. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little short video on coin cutting. And we'll see you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop.